In this video, I will discuss different access control models starting from role-based access control model, rule-based, mandatory or MAC, discretionary or DAC, attribute-based access control model and risk-based access control model. Now in access control, uh, we decide that a subject has an authorization to access an object. And identity and access uh, management system decide this at the time of enrollment of a subject and then at the time once the subject tries to use an object. And in larger organizations, the access control requirements are very complex due to a larger number of subjects and objects. Therefore, we use access control models. And these access control models addresses the three main concern of security that is confidentiality, integrity and authenticity. And these access control uh, models decide the relationships between subjects and objects and then grant the subject an access to an object based upon the relationship between subject and object. And uh, we use mixture of access control models for example, for firewall, uh, we use rule-based access control model and for HR, we use role-based access control models and uh, to have access to a file, we use the discretionary access control models. So it is a file server or file sharing server. Now. The NIST has a special publication that is 800-192 uh, which enlists the verification and test methods for access control policies and models. Now coming over to the first access control model that is role based access control. So the objects are uh, grouped together as per the job functions of a subject and uh, then we make a subject a part of a role. So role is uh, access to a group of objects as per uh, the job function of that role and whenever any new subject arise then we assign a specific role to that subject and all uh, the subject which are assigned the same role has uh, have same level of access so it ensures the least privilege for example the security admin and uh, the job function of system admins are uh, separated so, for example, the security admin can uh, read the security logs of systems but cannot access the systems itself. And the system admin can perform operations on his system but cannot uh, perform the security monitoring functions. Furthermore, the role-based access control model also ensures the data integrity and accountability. And it also reduces the operation and maintenance. Uh, since uh, we group the objects and whenever any subject arrives, so instead of assigning uh, single object we assign a specific role 
and then he can access all uh, the objects which are mapped to that role so it reduces the operation and maintenance uh, or managing of subjects and also the objects now in rule based access control model uh, we decide the authorization rules and uh, there is a concept of implicit allow uh, which is equivalent to the explicit deny so it means that everything is allowed unless it is specified otherwise so it is not a good security practice and it should be avoided and second thing is the implicit deny which is equivalent to explicit allow it means that everything is denied unless it is specified otherwise so it is a best security practice and uh, for example firewalls in their default configurations uh, imp uh, implement deny all so you have to explicitly allow so the guest list in physical world is an example of uh, explicit allow or implicit deny so a person who is not on that guest list cannot uh, is not allowed to a gathering and similarly the file has an access control a list which enlist the allowed or authorized user and uh, the actions they can perform on that file so firewall rules as i have already mentioned are an example of a rule based access control so we allow a specific port or a specific ip on in firewall rules and all other ports and ips are uh, blocked by default now next model is mandatory access control model and it is mostly implemented by military or government organizations and it is uh, very static and it follows a hierarchy and it is also known as non discretionary access control models since the authorization decision are made by the system not uh, at the discretion of the individuals so it works on uh, the security labels of objects uh, and also the subjects so security label of objects are defined by the owner or creator of that object for example top secret secret or unclassified and subject should have matching classification level to access an object now bella la padula uh, and biba uh, models are example of mandatory access control model where bella la padula focuses on confidentiality and biba focuses on integrity now coming over to the discretionary access control model so the access or authorization decisions are made by the system owner or the data owner or maybe the system custodian so they can decide who all users can access a specific object for example a file and what all actions uh, those users can perform so it is at the discretion of the system or data owner now uh, the folder on a file uh, server are an example of discretionary access control where the owner of the folder can decide who, what all users uh, or who all users can access uh, his folder and what all actions that they can perform for example for public uh, they uh, all the public can perform the read only uh, action and specific user can edit 
the files in the folder. Now social media platform is also an example of discretionary access control model where uh, the owner of a file or a picture uh, who uploads uh, the picture on the social media platform can decide who all uh, users of that social media platform can access that particular uh, picture. So discretionary access control model is distributed and there is no central authority uh, which is opposite to mandatory access control model. Now there is a risk of uh, non-consistent security policies uh, since every individual decides the authorization uh, for the object he creates or manages. So therefore there is also a danger of insider threat. An insider can uh, change the access decisions. Now next model is attribute based access control model and it is closely linked with risk based access control model. So the attributes of subjects are um, matched against a policy at granular level to decide whether a subject uh, can access an object. And these attributes may include the identity of subject, the role, the time, uh, location and the device that subject is using. So it is uh, a new or emerging access control model and it is very flexible dynamic and it is closely linked with risk-based access control model. For example, uh, for a new device, if the subject is coming from a new device, then uh, he has to perform multi-factor authentication to prove his identity. And uh, stateful firewalls are also an example of attribute based access control model uh, since the context of previous traffic decide uh, the access uh, to an object in the organization. Now coming over to the risk based access control model. So there are certain limitations with role based access control model and rule based access control model and both requires manual updates. So therefore, uh, this risk-based access control model uh, is very dynamic and uh, it works on the concept that the risk is dynamic and it changes over time. And therefore, access or authorization uh, should also change with the risk. For example, if there is a uh, threat intelligence coming in real time or the risk profile of a subject changes or there is any deviation uh, in the behavior of a subject, then uh, the authorization level of that uh, subject changes dynamically as per the risk. For example, if there is a threat intelligence related to a phishing campaign, then for time being, an organization may implement multi-factor authentication. Or if there is a brute force going on, uh, then firewall may uh, introduce a new rule by blocking a specific uh, tra traffic. For example, if a uh, login failure or login attempts are multiple then a new rule is introduced into the firewall to block traffic from that IP. So this was all. Thank you.